Hey there, welcome back to, or if this is your first time, welcome to Ampersand Unique Gifts and Home Decor. If you like watching thrift hauls, thrifting, thrift flips, upcycling, repurposing, crafting, organizing, then you are definitely in the right place. Today, we're going to take some items from my stash because it's been a busy week and I haven't had time to prepare anything. And we're going to show you what we can do. We're going to upcycle all of these stools or risers in one day. So stick around and let's see how they turn out. Our first stool is a handmade stool. I picked it up at Goodwill, so I'm going to get this tag off of here. It was $5.99, and it's definitely handmade. I think it was probably a shop project. Um, I don't know if it literally is put together with dowels or if they just used dowels down in those holes to cover where the screws were, but it was in really good shape, very sturdy, had a little bit of paint and various things on it, so I was going to just go ahead and sand the top kind of scuff sand it but the finish was coming off so much that it was very easy to just go ahead and get it all the way down to the original wood and then on the sides I just sanded where you could see where the the um, protectant the top coat had run a little bit there were some drips and then I wanted to scuff sand it before using my Debbie's Design Diary clay based paint in the color faded burlap so this is DIY brand paint and I'm gonna give all of these pieces two coats of the paint. I am just using a chip brush. I'm out in the shop today. So I've got a box there in the top right of a bunch of chip brushes that I picked up. And because this paint kind of is a um, a rough, you can get a smooth finish, don't get me wrong. Um, you can use different brushes and your Mr. Bottle and it'll definitely go on and have a wonderful smooth finish. But I am going for kind of a rustic look anyway, so I don't mind those brush strokes. So I set that aside to dry, dry and now we're going to look at this adorable little handmade riser. The glue is kind of coming out of there. I want to clean that up. The top wasn't ripped when I picked it up at the auction, but I did pull it off just to see what was underneath there. It was very dirty, very dusty. You're going to see a big poof of dirt come out here in a second. Um, and I just, I went ahead and took that fabric completely off using my trusty tools. An old pair of nippers, don't use a new pair because you'll tear up the ends of them. And my staple remover for um, removing staples from upholstery. So I go through and take that fabric completely off of there and then when I go to clean the glue out of the groove I discover that it's not actually uh, screwed in at all. The top, the legs are screwed in, but those are little faux covers and they're very cute but I surprised me. So I'm going to take it completely apart. It'll make it a lot easier to sand and clean and I, you know, usually, um, word to the wise, put your screws, we're not going to lose them, but I knew everything was right here on the bench, so they are rolling around. And I'm going to use this drill bit, and I'm going to countersink those down a little bit more, because I'm going to glue this on just for that extra hold, knowing because you're not going to be able to tighten those screws again, because I am going to fill them after I put this back in. So again, that's kind of why I wanted to make sure the screws went down a little bit deeper so that I can use this and fill in those holes so it's totally smooth across the top. This is not one of those um, old, you know, ironing boards that are made for, you know, doing collars and doing sleeves. This is actually just made to look like a little mini ironing board. And I just wanted to clarify that I do have some of those others because my grandmother was a tailor. So this plastic wood, it goes on pink and then it starts to turn tan. And you can see that the other side is already starting to turn tan while I'm finishing it up here. And so it doesn't take very long, but I set it aside just to make sure it was thoroughly dry before I started. Here's my next bench. This was actually gifted to me. And I'm not crazy about those leaves on the legs, but it would cause more damage to remove them than it's worth. So we're just going to leave those on there, take it apart. It had four screws holding it together. And again, I can't remember who gave this to me, but this was something somebody gave me to redo. And I'm not really crazy about that um, gingham, that red and white or red and tan gingham print for this. Uh, it's just a little too primitive and that's not what I want. But it looks like it actually originally came from Goodwill. And it 
was in good shape. It just was a little dirty and dusty. And again, um, not, not the style I was going for. So get my staple remover and start pulling all these staples out. And I go all the way around only to discover the original is still underneath there. That makes the leaves on the legs totally make sense. Um, it's in really good shape. So I'm not going to take that off. I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to just recover it again. And I had great intentions of taking this in the house and cutting my fabric. I was going to rip those seams out and use it as a pattern and do the same thing. Um, they were very inspirational at making me do it right. Um, but you'll see later. I don't because I just go ahead and stay in the shop. So I am intentionally using chalkboard paint. Um, so not just chalk paint, but chalkboard paint here. Um, it gives the best look for like a cast iron type look. And that's what I wanted to go for here. I really wanted a black base. So using this paint to accomplish that. And like everything, you'll see that I do the bottom first. It's it's a lot easier to go ahead and do the bottom and then flip it up to do the top. That way you don't scuff the top while you're doing the bottom. And I give this a couple coats of this chalk paint. It was actually probably closer to three coats. And now we have that drying and we are working on our adorable tiny little, this is not a toy. This is not a step stool. It has our warnings on there. Uh, this is from the Goodwill. Picked it up for $2.99. It's very sturdy, very cute. Noah's Ark's adorable, but again, just not the style I was looking for. So we're going to give this a good upcycle. I guess you could say these were trash to treasures because they were all gifted to the Goodwill and somebody didn't want them. So somebody's trash to somebody else's treasure. I snuck in there, grabbed them, snatched them all up, and we are finally upcycling them from my stash. So I'm just sanding. I had some kind of bumps and bruises on the edge where it left a little, some little indentions, and I wanted to sand it smooth, and then I'm going to cover it up with the Debbie's Design Diary Cottage Color. This is in collaboration with Jamie Ray Vintage, and this is the color Haint Blue. The difference in this paint and the DIY paint that I used earlier is that this one has a built-in sealer. And I love this paint. It's thinner and you, it goes on a little bit streaky at first. And so if you're used to using Debbie's Design Diary clay-based paints that are not the cottage colors, then it takes a little bit of getting used to at first because it is so much thinner. You want to make sure that you really watch for runs. But once you get used to it, you fall in love with it because it does give that same great coverage in two or three coats, but then you're also done. There is no sealer required. So you can see here, I mean, it's covering really well, even in its first coat. And I'm just going to go through and paint this entire piece. I don't know what, you know, a lot of times when you see things that have that artwork like that, it's actually paper. And you need to sand it off of there because it's going to peel up when you paint it or when you decoupage it. But this is almost like a plastic. And it I didn't want to have to work on sanding it all the way off. But um, I did smooth it down and it covered wonderfully with that paint. This is my last piece for today. And it is a handmade stool that I picked up at the auction. So this was seller 336 apparently. And I'm just getting this duct tape off of there and sanding the top it's a piece of plywood as a two by four down there in the base you can see you know this board looks like it split when they put it on there so they reinforced it with more nails um but again very sturdy it's not um i'm probably well not probably i'm going to put on the tags for all of the ones that i have that for decorative purposes then what they actually choose with the you know the the new owner decides to do with it is up to them but just for safety i don't know how sturdy any of these are to use as a actual stool to stand or sit on so back to the debbie's design diary diy paint this is the color avery and all greens i love green green's my favorite color all greens are awesome but this has a wonderful vintagey green look to it and i just Really, um, I'm going to go with that distressed look on here. So this is the only one that got one coat everywhere. Uh, I, I'm going to sand it back and kind of um, give it that worn look. So it turned out it really only needed one coat. So this is completely dry now. And we're going to hop in here while our other things are 
drying again that's what it's really like when you're in the shop so all the videos where it shows one whole piece beginning to end and the reveal um that's because they edited more than i was willing to do today and so you can see here sanding it smooth i love that plastic wood worked really well and we're going to go ahead and put our cross piece back in here i decided not to try to screw it in there because those little um the the little faux screw covers were attached so well and I would have broken them to try to get them off and because this is a decorative piece there's really no reason that that wood glue can't just hold that back in there and remember this here's our very first piece that we painted today and I did sand smooth around the edges just where the paint had kind of run down and I had that and I'm only going to use one coat again this is faded burlap it's kind of a, a taupe with a pink undertone but it is still pale enough if you when you decoupage regardless of what you're using rice paper is not as bad because it's a thicker um, paper but if you're using like tissue paper texture or napkins or anything you want to make sure that you have a really light base underneath it and that's because that's what will make your paper have the true colors if it's got a darker base it's going to show that through your paper so i did just use one coat here but um it turned out fine it was plenty and i'm going to go ahead and give this little stool um, a second coat on the bottom here but remember to always shake your paint because it does have that sealer in it where you don't have to with the other clay based paints this one has that sealer so you want to make sure that you get it um, very uh, shook up or stirred so i'm using this is jamie ray vintage um, decoupage paper and I will put the name of all the products that I'm using in the description of this video because I can't actually remember it's like newsprint but ads or something um, so I I go through and I just kind of cut out the part that I want today for my decoupage medium I'm using Minwax polycrylic it works as a really good decoupage medium but more importantly I'm in the shop and I didn't want to go in the house to get something else that I might use another time so I start with a starter strip. I just want to kind of get it going. It'll help me to make sure that it's straight as well as help to avoid the risk that I tear it as I, as I go through. So I'll just, I'll use a little bit and then, <clears throat> excuse me, I will smooth it out on the top. <clears throat> oh, sorry. I'm really not as concerned about wrinkles as I am just making sure that it has good adherence everywhere because I don't want it to peel up. But because I am going to come back and be distressing this a little bit, I'm not really concerned if there's wrinkles. It'll just kind of go a little bit better with the look of it all because I will actually sand the top as well. But I go through and again, I just a little bit at a time and then I go back on the top and do it and I set it aside to dry. I do end up coming back and I have several coats. I let it dry very well in between and I have several coats of that polycrylic because it is the top. I want to make sure that it's going to have that coverage. So here I'm kind of I'm doing a third coat on just that edge right there the kind of skirt of the and it's just to cover up where it had that two by two and then this side was a blue and white stripe the other side has a little bit of a red or red and yellow and blue and yellow and you know just to show you even though it kind of is a little bit streaky when you're just doing the first coat you can still see what great coverage that has and what again i love is that it's one and done you know i don't require a sealer if i wasn't going to be doing anything else to this i wouldn't have to seal it or do anything to it at all the legs just have the two coats and underneath and then i just again i wanted to do kind of that skirt with a third coat and the top i, I did actually only end up using two coats on the top but it covered you'll see in the end when in the reveal it covered really well and i changed up my idea here so i added in a color i originally wasn't going to use this is fusion all in one paint in the color heritage but i just i saw something in the newsprint ad decoupage paper that i really wanted to add to the top of this so originally i was going to be using a flower transfer and then i changed my mind and i just wanted a little bit different color here and this was on the shelf here in the shop from where i had painted something a little while back so sanding the edges just to get rid of where that kind of blue green came through and then i'm going to use that same faded burlap on the top here because i like the way it looks underneath that newsprint so and even though i am covering it up with paint 
you can see it, it was really smooth and you where I had sanded I'm talking about where I had put that paint filler the the, the wood filler oh my goodness wrong with me anyway um so here I am just finishing out the top of this and I'll set it aside to dry while I come back and do the decoupage here and it didn't fit it was too small because I didn't think it through before I cut it out so I just ripped the edges but what better than an iron advertisement for an ironing board so I add that and some others and finish it out again several layers of the polycrylic on top just to make sure it has a good um, coverage there and I am actually using a retired IOD iron orchids design transfer this is from the set of it's desperado but they do have others that have the black and white flowers so it's just the outline and in some cases i've seen people where they went back in and kind of painted them for a watercolor look but i am going to just be leaving this and iron orchid designs did come out with a new release last friday yesterday so let's um you know not be sad that this one's retired and go and check out their new ones you can get on their website and find a stockist near you or you can pick them up at jamierayvintage.com that's where i get a lot of my transfers if you're not familiar with how to use them they come attached to the sheet definitely leave them on the backing the white backing until you are ready to use them and then you just use the transfer stick and can get it attached there um i went ahead and distressed kind of a little bit used a very used uh 220 and gave it a little bit of a distress i did use the traditional pots transfer piece up in the top right of the stool and then i added another little piece down the side from the original desperado i would not have to seal in my paint but because i distressed it back and i have a transfer i used varathane wax in the color natural this is another retired IOD transfer. Um, this is Wildflower Botanicals. This is probably my favorite one of all times. And I bought several when they announced they were going to retire them. But I decided I need to go ahead and be using them on something. I can't just keep holding on to them forever. So I'm hand distressing around the edges and across the top. And then I'll use my sander to get the legs. And again, I'm kind of trying to give this a little bit of a worn look and aging it a little bit. So I'm kind of digging into that paint and then I'm using that same wax to cover it and this paint you do definitely need to seal and that wax gives it the coverage and plus it will seal in that transfer so again I had every intention to take this inside and sew it and do the same thing they did but again I just really wanted to get all these finished and I was out in the shop and decided I would just go ahead and do the way I do most chairs and just staple it around in there and fold up the corners and you know old school I guess I don't know lazy school but I'm switching out from this gingham fabric and going to this little French kitchen pattern and I thought it was really cute it's gonna look great with that cast iron look I did not have an iron out here so we are going to steam it I am just spraying water with my mister and then I'm going to use my heat gun kind of pulling it out a little bit as I go and it got those wrinkles right out of there and I'm going to wrap that around again I'm not I didn't take anything off but I'm just putting that uh, original batting down between there to cover up the original upholstery stapling it in screwing it together and here is how everything turned out every change 